Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Power Hour, starring myself, Ron Harris, and this guy, Giles Tiger Thomas. Today we're going to be talking about the Arnold UK, where he was second row, and of course the Ronnie Coleman tour that followed, where Giles took Ronnie all over the UK, Ireland, and even made a pit stop in Slovakia, and hung out with Crizo and all that good stuff. So now, please welcome, all the way from Tiger Towers, yeah, look at that autographed, Giles Tiger Thomas. What's up? Wow, look at that. So they treated, they looks like they treated you right at that Arnold UK, Giles. Absolutely, yeah. I had a fantastic time. That's the first Arnold UK I've been to because I got new management now. And um, yeah, they really looked after us. Um, because originally I was just going down for I forgot what I was going for. Sorry, I'm just trying to, it's been so much to try and process the last couple of weeks it's been so intense and so like kind of every day, you know, saying them up. I haven't had a chance to even really slow down and kind of process everything really, because the Arnold UK feels like years ago now. But um, yeah, they messaged me, uh, RCSS messaged me and said, look, um, can you um, can you get down and make sure Ronnie's okay on the stands and stuff? Can you be with him? And I said, um, yeah, no problem. I said, yeah, of course I will. So I messaged Ronnie and got down there and um, yeah, really, I mean, his schedule was busy, mine. It was back to back, you know, it was like young, young LA. Then he was on the uh, Panatta stand and then it was um, photo ops. Uh, did a collab a photo op with Jay Cutler as well. So I was over there for that as well. And, um, you know, he didn't have a lot of breaks. I think it was, uh, they, they pushed him hard. But, um, yeah, he, he, was, he was obviously, he's a he's an absolute professional. So, um, yeah, it was fantastic, fantastic event. Nice and busy and um, had a really, really good time. So you were second row. I was just watching it on a web stream, later the Gilco footage. But still, you were there in person. Uh, I guess I want to ask you, how close was it the second night between Hadi and Samson? Because he did pick up some first place votes, Samson. Oh, did he? Did, he? did he? I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think the gap definitely closed a lot. I mean, I think in Columbus it was quite clear mm. because Samson's conditioning wasn't um, kind of where it needed to be to even remotely be a threat to Hadi. Um, but um, and even on the first day of the Arnold, uh, the UK, I feel like there was quite a still quite a significant gap. But um, if you remember, because I mean, at the Arnold America this year, we kind of hoped that um, uh, Samson was going to do what he did last year at the Arnold America and really improve for the second day. But I feel like in the Columbus, Ohio one, he didn't really do that, mm -hmm. but he did it for the Arnold UK. He came out fuller, harder, drier. I mean, I think this was the best Samson uh, personally I've ever seen. I think he was better than Olympia. Um, and he did basically what I wanted him to do at the Arnold America. So that I think I, I'm not shocked actually they did get a, a one or two, you know, first place votes because he really, really, he really, really shone, you know, but um, Hadi was just, Hadi was just on it, you know, I wouldn't say he's on another level, but, um, you know, in terms of conditioning and muscularity, I mean, the guy's just a freak, but uh, Samson definitely closed the gap. Yeah. So he did that without a formal coach. He had parted ways with Milos two weeks before that. Mm -hmm. So his wife, Marlena, as she has a couple of times, apparently in the past anyway, she sort of helped him with that peak week and everything, but we we saw an improvement with him in such a short time. Now I'm wondering if he picks up, we have no idea who he's going to choose for a coach, but that's, that's the topic of speculation everywhere. If he can improve significantly in terms of condition, do you think his physique is ready to challenge Hadi, Derek, Nick? I mean, he's already beaten Nick a couple times now, but could he be a legitimate threat to get that title, the Olympia this year? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. I mean, I, um, Ronnie was asked that question a lot on the tour, and I said, who do you think? And he said, well, to be honest, he said, I think it's very, very – it could go to any of those three guys, Samson, Hadi, or Derek. Mm. At this year's Olympia, he says normally he said he's you know we have, we have a kind of uh, an idea of oh the last year's winner will win or the new guy coming up will win but there's the, there's the three guys that I also agree that I think legitimately have a chance to win the Olympia but um, I mean Samson I just wish Samson just uh, Samson needs to back off on the competing I think now I think mm. he really needs to really really focus on what he really wants because I honestly still I, I mean I maintain it I still don't think Romania and Prague were smart for him because he only had two weeks break before going into the Arnold, Arnold in America and Arnold UK. Yeah. So I think um, he needs to absolutely shut it down until the Olympia now because his body needs a rest because um, you know this competing is great all the time and I'm sure it's great to pick up extra prize money and bonuses and stuff like that from Hostile and all these different uh, supplement brands is good for exposure. Yeah. But if he really 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 is serious about winning the Olympia. Uh, I mean, I imagine he wouldn't be doing any shows before then anyway. No, but no. Um, yeah, he absolutely needs to shut it down now because um, what he brought to the to the night show at the Arnold UK was um, that's worthy. You know, if, with continual improvements, you know, if he puts, a, you know, just keeps keep plugging away. Absolutely, I think he's uh, he's in the running to win the Olympia this year. 
Yeah. All right. Well, that's enough about him. Let's go, let's talk about Ronnie Coleman. So when you do these tours, this is you've done a few of these these athlete tours, taking them around the UK and other parts of Europe uh, over the past few years, and you've had people who are pretty much current competitors. I think when you had Phil Heath, he was still competing, right? Well, he, well, no, he was. Um, well, yeah, I guess it was actually because he had he'd yet. It was in 2019, so it was after because he didn't do the 2019 Olympia, and then he made his comeback for the 2020 Olympia. Yeah. So I suppose you could say, yeah, he was kind of even though he skipped 2019, he was kind of currently, you know, still a competitor. Yeah. Well, the point the point I'm trying to make here is that Ronnie Coleman has been retired for well over 15 years, uh, going on 20, and yet he still has more popularity than almost any of these current guys on the scene. Um, you know, you. I saw the videos, the pictures you took from the from the different parts of the expo and this this tour that you did, packed fans just lining up. People love this guy. What is it about Ronnie you think that is so endearing to the fans, even though he's you know he's not as relevant on a competitive level as some of these current guys who are still top three, top five in the Olympia? Honestly, I think it's a combination of factors. I think it's because he's so authentic and he's so good with the fans. I mean, I was with him for what like ten days. Mm. And um, I mean, unless the only time he will refuse anyone is if he's actually physically eating something, he'll still no. <laughs> but other the rest of the time, he's like, sure, bro, sure, bro, yeah, no problem. He's so friendly, he's so authentic. Um, he really genuinely gets a lot of good energy from the fans. But um, I, 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 I mean, I've worked with Ronnie Fibo in 2014, Body Powers, you know, and of course he was popular then. But I feel like I feel like he's gone to another level in just wow. in this last two years. I think it's the combination of, I mean, Ronnie said himself, I think he said it's social media. He said he's his social media, because he's nearly at 10 million followers. Wow. He's got, I, last time I checked, he was at 2.1 million followers on his YouTube. And he has a good team of people continually putting out really good quality content. He's doing a lot of collabs. And um, and he just works. The guy works hard, man. I mean, he really, like, um, and also, and, uh, one thing that really shocked me was the second one we did in uh, Belfast, at um olympus gym in belfast like there was i mean they literally captured i think it was 90 or 100 people and i would say 90 percent were teenage boys wow like young like really young there was like probably like three women there there was because the rest is kind of kind of a mix like people like our, our age you know who, who you know who followed him his career when he was competing when he was you know sort of uh, eight time mr olympia right. some of these kids probably were barely born when Ronnie retired, <laughs> you know? So I was really shocked. And like, I mean, I mean, he's, it's just, it was, they, that really shocked me actually how young some of the the people he inspires, you know? So it's good to see that they're not just all following all these YouTubers and influencers and all these uh, TikTok dickheads, you know? Sorry. I'm, that's exactly what I was going to say, you know, I think uh, <laughs> because, you know, I, I, I get, I understand you can follow whoever you want to follow and you can uh, like whoever you want to like, but, it always kind of bums me out that I feel like this whole generation of young kids coming up has no sense of history because of social media just pushes what the current stars are, the Sams, the trend twins, these yeah. guys, a lot of them who don't even compete. Not, you know, I, I drop names at them sometimes like Ronnie Coleman, Kevin. I think everybody knows Ronnie Coleman. That's the one name they all seem to know. And the catchphrases as well are a big thing. Exactly. And they might, some of them know the catchphrase and they don't even know where they came from. I said, that's Ronnie yeah. Coleman. You didn't know that? But, so. but Ron, but Ron, sorry to interrupt, but I mean, it, I mean, even at airports, even at like, and we got to Slovakia, um, sorry, we landed in Vienna and then we got picked up and taken to Slovakia. It's only like a 40, 45 minute drive. There's no, there's not even a border control. You just drive straight over. And you know, you get like the serious police at the passport thing. We're going up because our special assistant tells you Ron, he's in the wheelchair. And the guy's just like that. And he's looking at his, his passport and he goes, looks at Ronnie, he looks back and he goes, Excuse me, are you the world famous bodybuilder, Ronnie Colvin? And he goes, he goes, Oh, I need a photo. So he opened the door and he's having a photo. And then then other people notice, like some of the um the people that work at the airport, young guys, you know, notice that it's running there, they're running over. And it's like, guys, we've got a we've got a plane to catch. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, air hostesses. I mean, people, I mean, it just is his level of fame has gone to it's like it's it's in the stratosphere now. I mean, it really is. I think it's the documentary, the social media. Uh, and the fact that he, you know, he works, he still works bloody hard, you know, and he's really, really out there a lot, you know. Um, so I think it's, yeah, I think it's a combination of, uh, of different factors. Yeah, so that must have been a little bit stressful for you as the manager of this tour, <laughs> trying to get, you know, you had seven locations. So yeah, seven, seven eight, eight days, eight, eight days, eight days. So probably 15 or 20 flights all in all. You had to get them no, from no, here. No, no, no. Okay. No. Well, but the point is, is you're trying so, to get places on time. You had a very tight schedule. Yeah. I saw all the appearances. And when you have someone that popular, 
and especially where he's so accommodating to the fans, where he doesn't mm-hmm. like to say, no, no, I'm, I'm busy. I got to go. I got to go. It must have been you must have been looking at your watch like because oh, you know there's there's three people waiting for a picture or thirty people waiting for a picture and he's gonna you know he's gonna talk to every single one of them and take a picture with every single one. Well, one of the because often we do a, we do like a format of like roughly sort of ninety minute seminar and then we you know we go to straight into the meet and greet and photos and signing stuff. Yeah. And I went to this uh, one of the ones in the UK, and um and I said to Ronnie I said Ronnie I said I've got a feeling I said it's not as I, I like the people, the nice people, I said, but it's not as probably a bigger gym as some of the other ones. I said, this is probably going to be a bit of a quiet one. So we got in there and there was like literally like no one there. And um, then I looked over and I said, so um, the, the, the table, I said, where's all the chairs? And he says, oh, we're not doing a seminar. We're just doing a meet and greet. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, great. Well, we're out of here in two hours. We can, be, we can get some Nando's and get some food, you know? <laughs> anyway, so then 20 minutes later, um, the, uh, the owner says, he says, okay, then open the doors. And so what do you mean? He says, have you, have you been outside? I went, no. He says, go and have a look outside. Oh. <laughs> the, fucking queue, the queue was around the block. Wow. And also, word got out in that town that he was there, and they allowed people to pay on the door. like They paid extra. Yeah. So so the meet and greet, I thought, would be done in two hours. But the, the thing is, when there's no seminar, and people don't get a chance to answer their questions, uh. when they sit down with Ronnie, they all want to ask a question. And Ronnie didn't cut anyone off. He sat there... And he gave them all as much. I mean, one guy I was filming on his phone. It was up to 10 minutes as he was 16, oh, this no. kid. And it was 10 minutes. And I was like, and I'm, I'm looking at Ronnie. And Ronnie's just like engaged talking to this kid, trying to motivate him and give him all this inspiring stuff. Yeah, buddy. And all the photos. And, you know, the kid's just almost like crying. He's so happy. Do you know what I mean? And um, that, that took five hours. Wow. Six Jeez. to 11. Six to 11. So that I've learned I'm never going to do that again because it's not fair on on Ronnie because it was very, very intense because it was one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one. And every time I looked, every hour I'd look at the queue, I'm thinking, that queue's not actually getting shorter. It's actually getting longer. How mm-hmm. is that possible? Because people got word and they were all coming in thinking, I don't know, some, sometimes I think people don't think that it's going to happen until they actually show up. And even with promoters, like, oh, he's shown up. And it's like, well, what do you expect? We said we were going to be here, you know. You, you know. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so it was... Um, it was quite intense, but I, I'll never, I'll never allow that, that, that to happen again because um, it was just, it was too much for Ronnie. And I mean, he was, he was really, I mean, he, he went to the, he gave the same energy to the first person that he did to the last person. Wow. You know, I mean, it was actually one point that the, the, one of the owners, she came over to me and she said, cause I was doing the photos for people. And she said, Giles, you okay? And I said, well, I'm fine. I'm fine. She goes, no, cause you're, you're starting to, you're swaying. Hmm. I didn't even know I was doing it. Cause I was so tired. I was Ugh. just like, because it's, you know, and the thing is, there is such a good energy, so you kind of keep going. You kind of don't realize how tired you are, and I guess I think Ronnie does as well. But um, yeah, it was it was it was incredible. Absolutely. I mean, incredible. he must. You guys must have been hungry too, because when are you going to eat? When five five hours of you didn't get to stop, right? It was just nonstop five hours yeah, of fans. Yeah, I think he had one toilet break. Do you know what I mean? And then the thing is, like, like at Arnold UK. I mean, I had two two guys that had done a tour with Ronnie in 2012. These um these the seat guys. You know, with the turbans, they're friends yeah. of Ronnie, guys called Tech and Kumel, really, really lovely guys, and they genuinely cared about Ronnie. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they knew that they, they're from Birmingham, so they knew the outlay, they knew where the, the, the side door, the right side doors were. Oh, I mean, wow. we had to stop people following Ronnie into the toilet sometimes, Oof. you know what I mean? Because if there wasn't a disabled toilet, he'd just go into the normal one and go into a cubicle. Yeah. And people were following him, and I'm going, no, 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 you know, just let the guy please go to the bathroom, please yeah. give him some peace, you know? Wow. So it was, I mean, the, the Arnold was intense, but. Um, we handled um we handled all the other everyone was very polite very respectful you know i mean at um the last night in slovakia i mean the queue was just ridiculous i mean there was like 300 people there and uh ronnie says i need the bathroom so i pulled his chair up and stuff so he went to the bathroom and then and his burger was ready because he likes his burgers you know <laughs> so we had like a green room where all the kind of sponsors and all the like the the, the, the the vip invited people like you know the sort of people from all the different companies that kind of sponsored the event you know, so I said, Ronnie, just go in there and get your burger. I said, these people can wait. And then as soon as you get in there, everyone in that room wants a photo with Ronnie as well, you know? Wow. So um, so eventually I said, um, so then when we came back out like 20, 25 minutes later, there was no, no one was pissed off. No one, very, everyone was waiting there quietly, very respectfully. You know, it was, uh, I think, I think Ronnie's definitely an, an example of someone that uh, gets back what he gives. Do you know what I mean? He gives oh. a lot to, I mean, he gives a lot to people. I mean, a lot. Quite yeah. impressive, actually. Very impressive. I mean, this, he's turning 60 years old, or is he already 60? He's 60 in May, May the 13th, same birthday as Lauren. Wow. Well, I mean, so this is a guy who's almost 60 years old, and he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. And for him to give that kind of energy to, over the course of the time you were with him, I'm sure it was 
20, 30, 50,000 people in all that came up to him. So that's amazing. I, I want to, before I talk about the, the, the questions and everything, you guys, I saw the picture with, in Slovakia with Michael Crizo. Yeah. So what was that meeting like? It looked like, uh, it looked like it was a good time. It looked like he was uh, really enjoying being there with you and Ronnie. Yeah, Chris. Well, obviously, because he's um, because the people who organised this were um, uh, Peter Pick from he's the CEO of the the VLS show, the Prague show. Yeah. Because when he when I announced the tour and he said, Jars, he says, please, can I get uh, can we get him to come to Prague? And I said, uh, oh, the tour's kind of booked now, mate. It's all it's all in place, you know. And he says, so they and then he kept saying, please, please. So I said, well, look, you know, let's 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 I'll put a proposal to Ronnie and you know let me know. So we did, and um, and he said, but well, we want him to come to Slovakia, but you're flying to Vienna, then it's a 45-minute drive. Mm -hmm. So it's the owner of 365 Fit and Co. Gyms. This guy's Martin Kajak. He's 28 years old, and he's got seven gyms already. Wow. And, <laughs> and they are beautiful, really high-end. I mean, this guy's real smart. I mean, he's very, very successful, self-made. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, so he, in the morning, we went to, we went to the gym, because Joseph Adult, the photographer, uh, photographed, you know, from the 90s and everything. Yeah. Is, there. Oh, yeah. is he Czech? Is he Czech? I forgot. I think he is. I think he is. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he did an eight-hour train journey to come over to, to Slovakia. Yeah. Or, he, or he might be Austrian. I might, he's either Austrian or Czech. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, possibly. Anyway, so anyway, so they had this huge, like they had a picture of Flex Wheeler, Dorian. Um, Chriso was in the reception. And they had, they were, I mean, they must have been 20 foot tall. I mean, these things were beautiful. And there was a shot of Ronnie from the 1998 Mr. Olympia. Oh. So, of course, we wanted, they wanted him to sign the picture. And then Chriso came over and had his picture as well. But, um, <laughs> I mean, Chriso is looking absolutely enormous. Wow. I mean, I just, I mean, yeah, they measured his arms at uh, 23, I think, 22 and a half or something, 23. Wow. But um, he was looking really, really big because uh, Chriso's doing Spain. He's doing the Empro. Oh, okay. Um, and also, Mila's asked myself and Lauren to go back and do live stream, so we'll be there. We'll be oh. there, so we can do we can do something on here if you want, mate. Um, oh, yeah. You know, like a like a wrap up or something. I'll do it from a hotel room, like we used to do for MD. Oh yeah, good times, mm. good time. Mm. So yeah, you you had all these seminars. I wonder, did the same questions come up over and over for Ronnie? And I'm sure he accommodated every. He he acted like it was the first time he'd ever heard the question. But yeah, what, what are the what are the, the questions that got asked at every single seminar? Well, the one that made me laugh, because Ronnie's actually, I mean, he's very, very funny. He's yeah. very funny, especially in, I mean, even just driving around in the car. Some of the stuff he was coming out with was just, <laughs> I mean, he had me, I mean, he had, he had me swerving a couple of times, like laughing so much, you know. And sometimes we were, I mean, Ronnie didn't really sleep the first half of the tour. He wasn't getting like any sleep. I mean, he really struggled. He was getting like one or two hours a night, oh, geez. you know, and then we're going back to back seminars and like four or five hours and stuff. I mean, the guy is an apps. I said, Ronnie, I said, just swear you're like a Terminator. Or you're a machine, mate. you're a T-1000. I said, it's just incredible. And then he started, then he had a couple of good nights of sleep and then he was fine. Yeah. But, um, oh yeah, the, the question that made me laugh was, he says, what's your favorite body part to train? And he says, and he draws this out over a couple of minutes. So it's, I mean, I, I won't try and do it, do it the same, but he's like, oh, I love training chests. And then they go, okay, thank you. Oh, I, I kind of like training back. And they go, okay, thank you. And he goes, oh, I love training arms. Uh, oh, legs is one of my favorites. And of course, then he goes through every single body part. And then, and, and I'm trying, I'm trying not to laugh because I've heard it because I know the punchline, you know. Because, yeah. but it's the way he does the dramatic pauses and stuff like that. It was so funny. <laughs> And then um, in uh, Belfast, obviously, you know, they can ask like steroid questions. You know, it's always, so, it's always that nervous, you know, you're always at seminars. Someone's always nervous. <laughs> ask. So this young kid st stands up, this young kid about 18, 19, and he's like winking at his mate going, I'll do it. Like, I think somebody dared him. Mm. And he says, Ronnie, what's your, what's your favorite steroid? And he says, it's the same question as my favorite body part to train. All of them. Ah. <laughs> and everyone's just clapping. Oh, man. Yeah, he really, he really, like, he knows how to handle these things. I mean, this guy's absolutely pro, but... Um, yeah. yeah, the other question. What were the other questions? Um, oh yeah, what was the, who was your biggest rival? Who would you who considers your biggest rival as, as Mr. Olympian? He says, I've got three. He says, Me, myself, and I. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, that was good. He, he delivers it really well, do you know what I mean? So um, and it's um, yeah, he didn't avoid any questions. And I mean he was um, yeah, it was fantastic. He got emotional on the last night, you know, in Slovakia. Really? What was when it? he what? did the last question, he just got like he said, "Thank God," because he couldn't believe the turnout. He's like, when he walked in, he went, "Holy shit!" He went, "Wow!" wow. He said, they, "All these people are here and I, like, for you." And I said, "Yeah, they're here for you, Ron, for you, Ronnie, mate." And he was like, "Wow, how did they get so many people?" And I was like, "Well, you know, you're a superstar, mate. You haven't been to Slovakia, Slovakia in 2010, you know." And they really promoted it well as well. So, um, I mean, every night was sold out. I mean, Strength Asylum. Um, this one, this, they, this, these, look at these beautiful posters. I had to get one of these, and they're printed on really nice. 
I mean, wow. look at that. Look at that. I mean, wow. these are just, these are beautiful. I've got Ronnie to sign that one. I, I said to, I said to the guys, I've got to have one of those. Yeah. So, um, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, he capped it at 140 people and he sold the tickets in six days. Wow. So he said, I could have, he said, Giles, I could have sold 250 tickets, no problem. And the church, and some of these tickets weren't cheap. I mean, some of the, I mean, the ones in Ireland, I mean, they were charging like good money, like, like, you know, like hundred dollars. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That's, that, that's... Like, and, 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 yeah. And, and all these young kids, you know, I mean, that's a lot of money for like an 18 year old, you know what I mean? But they, you know, they, 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 they turned up and they, you know, they were just, and everyone went home happy as well. I mean, there was, you know, and the same, they'd say the same things to him, like, you're an inspiration. Thank you. This is a once in a lifetime. I mean, he's like, he's like, he's like a godlike status. It's crazy, but it's, yeah. it's good to see, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is really, this is really uh, very heartening to hear for these kids because, you know, when you and I were very young, that's how you, the only way you could ever really see these bodybuilders and ask them questions was they would do these seminars, they would do appearances, and we would go to a gym or wherever it was, a contest in between the intermission, and we would pay to, to be able to ask questions and get their merchandise and stuff. And that sort of fell by the wayside, you know, over the years, especially when social media came along, because these kids just have a phone and they have total access to the guys on their on their Instagram, their Twitter, their YouTube. So they feel like they 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 know everything they need to know about them. I never thought. I assumed the turnout for this, this series of appearances that you were doing with Ronnie was going to be mostly an older crowd. I really thought it was going to be like yep. 35 to 55 age range. So this is so encouraging to hear that the young kids would actually pay to go out physically, drive somewhere, fly somewhere maybe even to see this, this guy who, like you said, some of these kids were babies when he was, when he was yep. re retiring. Uh, so very very cool. I, I mean, also also a lot of credit to his team as well because they put out they put a lot of good quality consistent YouTube content and stuff. Like, and I think in the, in this era of people training with tripods, you know, filming themselves benching a plate and all this crap, I think you know when people see like like I mean I grew up on you know blood and gut story and and and, and, um, and Ronnie Coleman uh, unbelievable. You know this is the stuff that fired you and me up to train how to train properly and not being a fanny, do you know what I mean? And, you know, and just, <laughs> and just, you know, cables and all these, you know, it's like backed up and someone who really just loves what he's doing, just lifting just heavy ass weight, you know? Did, did you ever, have you ever talked to Ronnie about that? What he thinks about this whole generation of, of people that are filming every little set and, you know, like I remember your story about some guy that was upset because he walked in front of him while he was trying to bench 135 pounds or something. Yeah. He was, this guy's legendary for on camera doing some of the craziest lifts we've ever seen. People still talk about these lifts. Well, it was 2005. That was, that was 20, 30 years ago? I don't know. It was a, it was a long time ago. So what, is, what does he think about the fact that this whole – I want to, I don't want to make it an us versus them thing, my generation versus their generation, but the fact that they put every little thing out there for consumption. Um, he likes social media. Mm -hmm. Like people say, people because I, I think people asked him the question, expected him to sort of complain or, or, or like sort of put it down. Anyway, yeah. I love social media. So it's given, <laughs> I feel like he he was he gave credit to social media giving him continued relevance. That's true. Do you know what I mean? He says because right. now he says I've got. I mean, he's, he's, he said I'm nearly at ten million followers, nearly at ten million, and he was doing all his own. You know, he was doing all his posts are done by him, and he was writing stuff, and you know, because he'd be sat there like you know, I'd be like on the Slovakia on the like on the stage and stuff. There was me. Ronnie and then this, this girl who's translating um, and uh, and he's, he's he's doing like posts and stuff and, he, and he's filming himself and then he's posting it straight away and he, he stays on top of it. He stays on top of it, mind. He's um, and he, I, th he, I said, do you enjoy it? He goes, I love it. <laughs> so he, he likes it all. He like he likes social media because I think he realizes that it's given him a continued, not just relevance, but like career like that. So so we can do stuff like this and every single night is absolutely packed to the rafters. And also, like you said, like, like I said, you know, appealing to a younger crowd. I mean, like I said, in Belfast, it was probably 90%, I would say, teenage boys. Yeah, because, you know, most of the guys of Ronnie's generation, there's a few of them that are very, very active on social media in the same way that Ronnie is, but not many. And the, you hear them complaining, and once in a while they'll make like a sort of like a bitter or cynical post. And I'm thinking, you know, I, I get that. I totally get that because they say, well, we had to earn our publicity back then. You had to be a champion, this and that. I said, but you could do what Ronnie and guys like Kevin and uh, Gaspar, a few others have done, and just embrace change in social yeah. media, and you could be part of this. You could be part of the current generation, and you could have these young people following you instead of complaining how they're following guys that you don't think deserve to be followed. Yeah. I mean, like Ronnie's uh, – it seems to me like Ronnie's um, sort of 
Like I, I remember once I was at Body Power in 2016, and um, was it Michelle Lewin, one of the influencers? Yeah, yeah. She was on the next stand, and I remember when I was just stood there, like, and obviously the lines of Ronnie. I was just literally stood next to him as he was signing and taking photos on the uh, Ronnie Coleman stand, RCSS, and they were on the next stand. And then when the when it came to her leaving the stand, I mean, they had like four or five security, and they all linked arms, so she was in the middle. So they like created like a circle of whatever it's called. And they ran through and they screamed at the top of their lungs, get out of the way. Rah, rah, rah. Okay. And it was like, and it was ridiculous. I, and I looked at Ronnie and Ronnie just looked at me and like, just kind of looked at me and I just rolled my eyes and, and he just went like that sort of thing. And I said, and I was like, How? and then when I, when I was pushing Ronnie to the green room, you know, cause he, he, was, he didn't have the electric wheelchair then, you know? Yeah. Um, he was just, we were just politely saying, oh, you know, just come to the stand later if you want a photo, you're back in 45 minutes. You know, it was just so, like in 10 years, 15 years, well, like eight years later, is Michelle Lewin going to pull anyone, you know, in uh, pull any sort of sort of crowd? Is she going to have any around? Or is it going to be the next, is it going to be the trend twins? Is it going to be the next, you know, the big, yeah. bait, the big, you know, the big sort of uh, fad? Whereas Ronnie, Jay, Dorian, I mean, Ron, the, Dorian's queue, I tell you, Kevin Navrone had a massive queue at the Arnold UK. Mm. I, I didn't even get a chance to go and say hi to him because it was just constant. Yeah. You know, so I love, I love the fact that these kind of, these 90s legends that we grew up on, we were inspired by, still have um you know a huge they can pull a huge crowd i think it's fantastic yeah well kids out there i applaud you and keep following the legends because uh yeah big time. You, gotta, you gotta know your history so did did uh ronnie come up to your your house tiger towers yeah he's in the, I got in the studio yeah okay. yeah we did um we did about 40 minutes on, in the studio and it was good yeah really really good because yeah. the first couple of days we um the first day actually we did something that was off the tour which um ronnie's team asked me he said look can we do a collab with um julius maddox Oh yeah, the the bench presser. Yeah, yeah, eight hundred pound bencher, and there was a uh, the guy that's the number two. Basically, I mean, these guys were just monsters. I mean, they were like six foot three, six foot four, so three hundred and fifty pounds. I mean, the guy's shoulders were just. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't. We've seen him up close. I mean, and really lovely guys as well. So there was a gym in Birmingham um, that um, they they were doing. Uh, they wanted to do a world record shoulder press. And they wanted Ronnie, like, you know, in the video going, yeah, buddy, like, wait, you know, sort of shouting encouragement. I think we, I said, look, guys, we've got like two hours, we've got 10 to 12. I said, we've got to be on the road by half 12 at the latest. So, you know, we've got to eat before we go. That was the first morning. And um, and Julius Maddox um, shoulder pressed on a free barbell, six plates. That's 585 pounds. Yeah, six plates, six plates. And also the bench was just like a standard gym bench. Now think about that's nearly a thousand, that's not half a ton pressure on that incline because it was like 80, it was like 80% incline. It's a shoulder press, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, and the rack was quite just like a standard rack, you know, it wasn't mm. like a power lifting. And I was thinking, like, if that thing breaks, you know, this this holding the thing, I mean, that's that's death. I mean, this yeah. so I was really and they were they it took them like an hour, over an hour to work up to that weight. I mean, it's yeah. it was funny because they started doing an empty bar, and I said, "I said, guys, I said, I'm going to use a bit more weight than this." <laughs> I said, "I said, please tell me you're going to use a bit more weight than this. This isn't very impressive." Yeah, like, we're, we're warming up, mate. Warming up, and then they went two, three, four, five, and then uh, five and a half, and then they started slapping each other and come on and screaming and shouting at each other. Ronnie was just loving it; he was just absolutely loving it. Yeah. And um, I mean, seeing that, seeing that, I mean, that's a world record. I think that was it's, um, that was a world record. It was on; it's going to be on Julius Maddox's um, YouTube, and I think it's going on to Ronnie's as well. Yeah. But um, just I filmed it, and to see that was just mind blowing. And Ronnie was like, "I used to do three fifteen for twelve, you know." Yeah, I, remember, I was just gonna say, I remember, and it was like, it didn't look, I wouldn't say easy, but th those reps were moving pretty, pretty smoothly. Let me tell you, it wasn't like he ah, wasn't, wasn't struggling. Yeah. So, dude, guys, if you don't know, Giles does a podcast on the Ronnie Coleman channel called "What Else Are You Gonna Call It?" Nothing but a podcast. So check that out. I assume that episode yeah. is going to be coming up pretty soon, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I literally got back last night. I got back late last night. And I'm, I mean, I haven't had a chance to properly reflect upon because you're so in the moment and you're so thinking about the next seminar, the driving, the food, the social media, because you've got to stay on top of it every day. You've got to do this. I was doing the, the post from that day at night, literally as my eyes were going. And in the morning, as I'd wake up, I'd be doing the stories and then tagging everyone in and making sure that everyone, that the next one, you know, you let know that we're all on time. Yeah. everything's good you're keeping them informed so they're not stressing out because we were bang on time or early every single time but we had a bit of um we, we uh, thank god lauren stepped up because um when we got to belfast there's two there's two airports in belfast international and city oh. and the city i mean it should be called belfast shitty because it's a terrible airport i mean it was just awful wow. um and also even the guy from we dropped the hire car off he says i really call it yeah <laughs> picture you know wow. so um but um yeah, so we were back to uh, board a flight to Amsterdam, 
and then go on to, to Vienna. And literally, as we were about to check in, it came up cancelled. Oh. I was like, no. I was like, shit. Oh, no. And Ronnie, I was stressing. I was like, okay, Ronnie, it's cancelled. He goes, oh, okay. I'm like, well, wow. he, went, he says, I don't get stressed. He said, so I don't even understand why people get stressed. He said, he said, I've never been stressed in my life. He said, you can change it. You can. If you can't, you can't change it. It doesn't matter. And he said, I said, well, I'll fix it. I'll fix it, Ronnie. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know you will. So he, so he, he scooted off because he wanted this adapter plug. And then he came back and it was like getting 15, 20 minutes. And I'm ringing Lawrence and Lauren, you need to help me out quick here. This is an emergency. Because like the guy at the special assistant was asleep at the desk. No one at the check-in. It was one of those it was one of those ones where you're completely on your third book in it. And they can't help. I was like, what do we do? We've got to be in Vienna, Slovakia, because we're being picked up, you know? Yeah. So um Oh, so uh, yeah. So anyway, Lauren says, "Okay, then you're gonna have to go to Heathrow um, in in an hour. There's a flight going in an hour. You have to. St- I'll book. I booked your hotel. Go to this hotel. Stay over like three, four hours sleep, and then you're gonna have to fly very, very early Oof. to to Vienna." And I was, oh, thank God for that. Um, and then and I looked at Roddy, and I was thinking, because I was thinking, shit, he's gonna be getting impatient now. He got answers. He got the phone to Kevin Navron. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because I heard it, I hear him, and he's like, "Yeah, I've known your dad thirty-three years, nineteen ninety-one nationals. That's where we met." Yeah. And I thought, "Who's he talking to?" And then he, he said, "Put your son on, put your son on." So he saw, and then Ronnie was giving a pep talk to Kevin Ronnie's son. Oh wow! So and I was thinking, "Who's he talking to?" And I went over, and he went, and, he, and then he goes, "Giles, he says, do a tour with Kevin. I've told him to do one." I said, "You're doing a good job. I told him to do one." And then Kevin goes, "Hey, Giles, how you doing?" And I says, hey, "Yeah, yeah, just, just just trying to sort these flights out and everything." So, um, so yeah, and anyway, Ronnie gets off the phone, I saw it, Ronnie goes, yeah, I knew you would. <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> so chilled, That's so chilled, and I mean, I'm looking calm, but inside I'm going, ah, yeah, you know, of but he's just, he wants, so I know, let the promoter know, and then the promoter was, was stressing, he's like, ah, don't worry, I'll add Lauren to the group chat, There's like a group chat for every single, nearly all the promoters, you know, and then Lauren's saying, okay, I'm on the computer, we sort it, so within half an hour, we, we were sorted, and Ronnie's just completely chilled out, it was, um, that was the one thing that could have gone horribly wrong. So anyway, they picked us up and we made it there in time, you know, because the owner, Martin Kajak, he put, picked us up in his Audi RS6. Ah. And I mean, that is a beast of a car. And this guy knows how to drive. And Ronnie likes fast driving. I was, <laughs> I was shitting back. I was going, Lauren, this guy's driving really fast. And he's getting right at people's asses because that's it. It's about 40, 45 minute drive from, uh, from uh, Vienna to Bratislava, you know, and he was just, I mean, I must be 130 miles an hour easy. Oof, and Ronnie's like, "Yeah, I like this." I was like, "Ronnie," he says, "Oh, I love it." He said, "This is how I drive." <laughs> he drove. He drove me to the airport in 2005 because for some reason my flight was later than like almost everyone else's when I did that Ronnie Coleman weekend. And what was he driving? I think he was his uh, one of his cat. I think it was his Escalade. No, it was a, it was a it was some type of sedan. But he was driving very very fast, and he didn't seem bothered, like worried about getting a speeding ticket or anything. He had to be doing yeah. like 100 miles an hour on the highway and totally calm. He's yeah. a perfect example of someone. We always hear this and we're supposed to take it to heart that you can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you react to it. Yes. And and he's he's a perfect example of someone who can just yeah. stay calm under pressure. I mean, I mean, like same with the crowds. I mean, everyone was very responsible. We didn't have any incidents with idiots or people being inappropriate or, or annoying or I mean, he's just, mm-hmm. you know, he's just he gets in that zone and he's just and he, lo- and he genuinely loved meeting with the fans. But I mean, there was one day I was like, oh, I to tell him about this early flight to Ireland because mm-hmm. it was it, it was a flight in the morning early or late at night. And so if we did it late, it would have meant adding an extra day to the tour. So I just made the decision, but then I didn't tell him until the date the night before. He says, huh. we're doing it. He says, okay, what's happening tomorrow? And I said, okay, we're going to be here by three, by four, da, 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 to seven. And as long as you keep him informed, he's, you know, he's just he's happy. And I said, Ronnie, I've got something to tell you, mate. I said, he says, I said, we've got to be at the airport. We fly at seven, we've got to be there for five. And he went, oh, no problem. He said, well, no sleep for me then. He said, I'll, I'll be maybe getting, he got like an hour. Oof, um, wow. he's, a, he's, a, he's a night owl. He, comes night, he, he doesn't go to bed till like three. You know, so yeah. he's like, I was, I was, I'm so sorry. He says, it's all right. It's just fine. He's just, you've got to get there. So uh, I told him, he just, he just didn't like, what are you me for? Like, I'm not phased. Just, you know, tell me what time you're going to come knock on my door and we'll, you know, get, and he's just so easy. Yeah. You know, it's, it reminds me, um, there's a press conference for the Olympia. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah press conference for the Olympia years and years ago where he talked about, you know, how he never complained. He said, when I got last I complain. I didn't complain. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He said, bottom line, and the last thing he said was like, don't complain. And, I mean, he's a prime example. Yeah. This guy's 
his body's you know riddled with injuries and afflictions. Basically, he's, he's thirteen in surgeries, thirteen surgeries, 13 surgeries neck, back, hip. Uh, he's got a lot to complain about. If he really, you know, people with nothing to complain about complain. This guy legitimately has things. I'm sure he's still dealing with pain all the time. Uh, he has no regrets. He never complains. I mean, he's just such an amazing human being. Forget about the yes, eight Olympias, really eight eight Mr. Olympia titles. That's his. That's his place in history for sure. But anyone who's been privileged enough to get to know him on any level, you know, he's just a he's just a very unique human being. Ron, Ron, I met him in '96 at the British Grand Prix. I didn't really speak to him, but I saw him. Yeah. Then I kind of met him and spoke to him at the 2001 Olympia, 2002, the Grand Prix. Kind of started working for him. 2000. I met him at the Isle of Europe when he launched in 2011. I became friends with him and Brendan. Yeah. Worked from 2014 to 2016 as his RCSS UK market manager. Did both house, did FIBA, and he's always been the same. Always mm. been the same. Yeah. And I was updating his wife. I was updating Susan because Susan was messaging me. I mean, she's lovely as well. I've never really spoke to her before, but she's lovely. And I, I was updating him. In the end, she says, Charles, it's fine. She says, we, we, you know, we know you're taking good care of him. I believe you. She says, any problems, just let us know. Hmm. Um, but um, like they're very, just such, and you think they've got eight kids as well. Whew. You know, <laughs> grandchildren as well now. He's got a grandson. He's got a grandson, oh, wow. so he's very happy about that, you know. Hmm. So, but um, he's just, he just talks about all the time about how lucky he is and Bless. and how, and he speaks, and it's, not, he's not bullshitting. I mean, he really, he genuinely speaks from the heart, you know, and I think that's why, you know, and he's very humble as well. He's very sort of like, like the, the, the Slovakia at the end, he, he kind of like, you know, and he went, so thank you everyone for coming out, you know, and he, he just, and everyone was, you could hear a pin drop. There was probably 300 people in the room, you know, because mm. there was people in the other room and the green room as well that were there. So there was, and every seat in the house was full. Wow, and it was um yeah he's, it was a everyone just said it was an incredible experience you know so I mean there wasn't a single person that was uh, you know pissed off or wasn't happy you know and there's some of the people like at the end of the queues have been cured yeah so. yeah I mean um so you're going to be doing more of these tours you've done a few and this won't be the last one it's going to be kind of hard to top this one because I mean the, <laughs> yeah. the the feeling of you know goodwill and everything and the that's a legend. I mean, Kevin would be, I think Kevin, <coughs> if you do one with Kevin, that'd be pretty amazing too. Um, I'd love to do yeah. one with Kevin. Kevin was like the guy who got me involved in bodybuilding meter in 1994. Right. He was the one. That's why I think um, guys like Kevin and Ronnie and stuff like that, they know that they have enough, even if they spend a minute with someone and they, because he asked them, because when he, when they'd come to think, he'd ask them about them. Hmm. And he was genuinely interested. He wasn't just doing, he wasn't just like doing a robot voice and go, oh, what about you? He, and he genuinely interacted with them. Do you know what I mean? And gave him a little bit of, he was trying to give something to every single one. But um, but yeah, I think I'm honestly right now. Um, I don't want to say who and everything, but I think I'm going to be a victim of the success of this one by relaunching because um, because obviously twenty. I mean, I did Phil Heath 2019. I did Brandon Curry 2020. Ashley Colt was a 21. In 2022, I had four planned. Then obviously the Irish incident. Yeah, <laughs> so that's that kind of put paid to that last year. You know, all those medications. I was out of it. You know, I was I wasn't I wasn't well at all last year, mentally, physically. Yeah. So and obviously when the the whole MD thing happened, it was like right. I need to. It was a fire under my ass. I was like right. I can really put all my energies because I'm not tied to the studio. I'm not tied to the editing room. I'm not tied to booking guests and yeah. writing and deadlines. So I just thought I'm going to put everything into these. Um, and I've had a few pros messaging me. Put it that way. Oh, nice. So, I mean, if I even if I if even if I commit to the ones that I've kind of said I do want to do do a tour with you, or they've said that to me, I mean, I, I could be doing another. I could be be doing maybe do four or five more this year. Nice, yeah. So, sure? and also, also, um, in when we're in Ireland, um, on the we're having breakfast in the second hotel, and Ronnie says, "Do you want to do another tour?" <laughs> 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 yeah, he did. I went. Seriously, wow. seriously, wow. and that was that was I think that was the day of the really early morning as well. So and he was tired that day. I could tell, yeah. you know, because like you say, it doesn't complain. You, you kind of pick up on things, you know. And he was sleeping a lot in the car and stuff. Hmm. And um, I said, "Really?" And he went, "Yeah." He says, "Well, well when does it start getting warmer in the UK?" Because he doesn't like <laughs> cold weather, you know. And I said, "Well, maybe May June." He says, oh, "Okay, okay, let's let's talk." He said, "Let's uh, let's set something else up, you know, because because nice. obviously, like everything, you know, from the um, you know the hotels and the finances and all the way that I organized it. I mean, obviously, there's things that as I go along, every single one, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, "I should have done this differently." Or but he didn't ever point anything out, or so you should have done it this way, or should have done it that way. No. You know, he was very, um, I think he appreciated the fact of all the efforts I was going to, you know, and the hospitality. And we made sure he was he was fed and, you know, I mean, obviously we didn't get a lot of sleep, but um, the fact that he said that to me meant a lot to me, actually. And I said, Ronnie, I would love to do one. So 
Um, we, we're looking at, I think, UK. Um, Emilio's interested in bringing him over for Spain because we, um. we rang him. And he went, please, it would be my honor, Ronnie, to have you in Spain. So we might be going to Spain. So I'm, 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 we'll figure it out. Anyway, we might, we might not. But um, yeah. And he's not afraid to travel. And he does genuinely like um, meeting, you know, meeting so many different people from different countries. Yeah. Wow. So I'm, I'm so happy that the tour went very well. I knew it Me would. Because, um, yeah, I, <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you've done such a great job with the previous tours. And I knew this was the, I said, if, if he's going to do a tour with anybody else, I think this is going to probably be the best one ever because it you was. have that history. You worked for Ronnie, it for was. Ronnie's company for a few years. You've always been close with Ronnie and you've had this time to really perfect your system, as it were, with the yeah, tours. Man. So yeah, you, I'm sure you're much better and more efficient with everything about running these tours than you were the first time you tried it. I mean, I mean, on the Phil Heath tour, I mean, on the second day, I was like, oh, I'd have done this differently. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, like you got to plan them so there's not too much driving. And, you know, like the first two nights we drove back home, I drove back home and I put Ronnie in a local hotel for two days. Really, like the Shipton where the, the 17th century where I put Phil, Brandon, Samson, Patrick to a Kamal, um, you know, I was put him in that night. He's out the way and it's not the nice, nice food there. Yeah. Um, but um, I mean, I was, I've been very lucky. I think with the, who we had, Phil was fantastic. Brandon was fantastic. Ashley was fantastic. And don't forget she was bookending that with competing. So she was on prep and traveling and doing seminars. So she was amazing. Um, so, um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so, yeah, so I, I, um, yeah, I've got, like I said, a few, a few planned now, but, um, also, do you want to talk about the, the Phil Heath premiere I was at? Yeah, let's do that real quick, because, uh, what's yeah, it called? Oh, Breaking Olympia. Breaking Ooh. Olympia, it looked like, it was Generation Iron put it together, right? No. Oh, no, it was a, a Seven different... Bucks. Seven, seven bucks. Seven bucks, so I, I take it all back. Yeah, I looked yeah. at the. I just saw a trailer on uh, Dan Solomon's stories, and the production values are incredible. So yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson's company produced this. Uh, so we've seen documentaries before about bodybuilders. How did this one compare to others that you've seen in the past? It was very good, very very good. Like I said, the production was next level. I mean, um, I spoke to the producer afterwards because he was there because this was the actual international premiere. Oh wow! In Birmingham because of the timing or something to do with it or whatever. Because it was coming out. It came out on the what day is it? Twenty seventh. Came out yesterday. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's on. Um, I spoke to Shuri's wife, uh, and uh, she said it's everywhere but Netflix. But it probably will end up on Netflix eventually. Hmm. So it's on Amazon Prime. Um, well, all the other basically the streaming platforms. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, because Phil, because I, I actually Simon Fan, you know Simon Fan, remember? Yeah, of course, Simon. I yeah, know. Simon messaged. He said, "Oh, you're going to the Phil premiere," and I went, "Oh, I didn't know about it." Uh, he said, "Oh, it's the weekend of the arts on the Sunday night." Because Ronnie was originally supposed to come with me, and then um, he had a bit of a bad stomach. He left early on the expo on the sun Saturday. Had a bit of a bad stomach, and then he, he said, "I just need to." I think he just needed a rest as well because he was mm. really, you know. So he went back. So, um, <clears throat> so I was like, "All oh, right." So he gave me the number of the organizer, the promoter. So I messaged him. I said, "I'm Giles Thomas." I explained who I was. He said, "Oh, he'd love you to come, Giles. Love you to come." And they actually moved it from one theater to another one because there were so many people wanting to come, and they didn't want to turn people away. So, and then the net, I think the morning or the day before of this, um, Phil messaged me, DM me. He said, Giles, I'd love you to come to my premiere. I said, I've already sorted it. I'm already coming. I'm already on the guest <laughs> list. Me, Ronnie, and photographer Chris Bailey. Yeah, Chris. Do you remember Chris? Where, um, Jose called Photo Jesus. Photo Jesus, yeah. Cool yeah. Guy. Cool <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> yeah, so I said, I said, Chris, do you want to come, mate? And he says, oh, well, yeah. He said, I'm supposed to be saying Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but I'll change it to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He said, "I'd love to come with you," uh, and I said, "Well, Ronnie might come as well." So, um, so we got um, so there's like canapes and like uh, champagne and stuff like that. We got there. As soon as the first person I bump into was Ryan Terry and uh, Bob Chick, so I was chatting to them. <laughs> Sean Ray was there. He turned up with Simon Fan. Um, Hadi was there. Hanny was there. Jay Cutler was there. <laughs> Cherie. There was a nice, nice little group of people. Do you know what I mean? A load of load of Brits, obviously people that I know. Yeah. And um, and then we went into the the premiere. It was quite cool because it was us Brits were sat at the front and right behind us. <laughs> but you had Hadi, Hanny, Jay Cutler, Bob Chick, um, and we all watched it. And obviously Phil was sat behind us watching it as well. You know, Cherie Cherie was actually part of the editing. Wow. Yeah, because I said to I said Cherie, I said, Cherie how the hell? Because it was it was done over. I said how much? How many hours of footage was Giles? It was like hundreds of hours of footage. <laughs> In fact, a couple of times they came and it, they filmed it, don't forget, during COVID. So they, a lot of the other production teams couldn't fly. They had to drive. So like they'd have to drive across America to go to Phil's house and then they had to put all the backdrops in, you know, to, she said our whole house was blacked out for about two or three weeks at one point because <laughs> of all the backdrops and the lighting, you know? Yeah. Um, 
and um, they put some serious money into it. But it, it was good. It was really, really good. I think it'll show another side. I think it's an antidote to that Generation Iron yeah. portrayal of, of Phil, you know, because that I think that didn't really help him, um, you know, help Kai. But, um, yeah, I don't think it really, really helped Phil. But it, yeah, it really shows another side to him. It really goes into – I mean, the, the, the only bit I didn't enjoy was the bit where he's talking about basketball because I'm not really into basketball. Yeah, me neither. But when it gets to the bodybuilding bit, mate, it was fantastic. Loads of really like unseen footage of the Olympias and backstage. And and they had Jay Cutler was in it a lot. I mean, he was one of the main, I'd say he was the main narrator for the whole documentary. Oh, wow. So he really stepped up for Phil, really helped him out. And he really kind of like, doc, you know, like a timeline. He really helped do a timeline. Oh, in 2010, this happened. Da, 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 da. I was the one who spotted him and got him in touch with Hanny and, you know, and and it um it really went to a lot of detail. It was um I think it's gonna be I think so far I think it's gonna be well I, I loved it, but I think it's gonna be very well received. And then afterwards he did a QA and a and there were some really, really deep, lovely questions asked. <laughs> and then Bob Chick puts his hand up and he says, How much do you bench? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, everyone's like clapping. I was like, nice one, Bob. Oh, so, did uh, yeah. did did somebody ask him? I would have been the, the dope said ask him about a comeback because I think he's actually he never said he was retired, and he kind of hints. He makes these, like, veiled remarks. And in your gut, will we ever see Phil Heath again on a stage competing? He, well, he reveals that in the documentary. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we got to watch it then. Because Phil know. was like, Giles, he said, there's a, there's a bit of a sh – a couple of people said to me, he said, Phil says there's a big shot coming. Oh, jeez. Okay. So I don't want to reveal it. You have to rent it and buy it and watch it. But, um, yeah, it was um, – and then Phil, I spoke to Phil afterwards. We are chatting away, and he says, yeah, he said that was a that was a big thing for me to say. He said that was for me. Because I said, what was the most meaningful moment? Um, and he said, well, apart from just getting the thing done, because it yeah. was like so much work and so much filming, he said it was the, the thing I said at the end. He said that was, uh, that was wow. a big deal for me to say, you know. Yeah. Well, I do have uh, most of the streaming services, so I'll check that out later today or tonight. I should see. Good. It's really good. I want to hear what he's got to say. Okay. It's called Breaking Olympia, guys. I think uh, we'll show that we'll mix the trail into this. I'll tell you a funny story about that. Do you remember what, like, because it's, I mean, it was like 20, I mean, they started filming, I think, 2018, 2019. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, because remember when The Rock was at um, the 2017 Olympia? Yeah, yeah. I think that's when they started to to, 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 to sort of get involved with it. Hmm. But do you remember when um, my old producer for Global Muscle, we did um, one of the thumbnails, and he, he said, Breaking the Olympia. He put a the in. Because yeah. uh, Phil talked about it. We had Phil on Global Muscle. And then we, we did like a mini clip and it said breaking the Olympia. And then I got a call. I got a message from Dan, Dan Solomon. He says, Giles, can you, can you ask Phil or try and explain what breaking the Olympia means? Because breaking Olympia and breaking the Olympia, that's two pretty separate things. And I think it got the alarm bells going with Dan at the time, you know. <laughs> and I said, sorry, mate, that's our mistake. I said, my producer active, act, accidentally put the in between uh, breaking the Olympia, but uh, yeah, it was funny. So that was oh, god for that. <laughs> well, yeah, because let's not forget that uh, Dwayne Johnson was supposed to put on this Athleticon thing that was yeah. theoretically going to rival the Olympia and the Arnold. So that makes sense. That's true. Okay. So breaking Olympia, I'm going to check that out, man. I'm glad you already, really already. If it gets a two thumbs up from Tiger, I'm going to. I'm definitely watching it. Yeah, and it was um, it was nice to speak to Sheree as well. So and it's funny because I went to the um I went to the bar. <laughs> In the pre-party thing, and um, and then Isabel Terrell and um, one of the ladies from Panatta was right at the bar, and you know me, Mister 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 Gentleman. I said, oh, "Ladies, do you want to do you want a drink?" And they went, "Oh my God, really? Really?" I said, "Oh, two glasses of rosé." I said, "Oh, two large, please, two glasses of rosé." And then I got a drink for Cherie, and then uh, they walked off with their drinks, and then I said, "And I got my card," out. and she says, "No, no, it's, it's on a tap." I says, "What do you mean? I haven't got a tap." She says, "No, no, no, um, Universal. They're paying for it." <laughs> Wow! So, so I got I got credit for buying drinks for everyone. Oh, <laughs> so nice. Anybody else want a drink? I'm, I'm buying. So it was it was all free. So yeah. awesome, man! Oh, I love that VIP treatment stuff. Mm. So yeah. right, man, well, let's uh, let's wrap this up, uh, guys. If you have topics that you want us to talk about, leave those in the comments. If you have any comments in general, leave them in the comments. It's good for the algebra rhythm, algorithm, whatever it's called. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what an algorithm is, but uh, it, it's it's getting clearer to me over time. Uh, so, uh, also keep an eye out on the Ronnie Coleman channel for Giles's new edition of nothing but a podcast with Ronnie Coleman. And he's mm -hmm. going to be revealing all kinds of cool stuff about his tour coming up, more tours. Ronnie signed this as well. Look at that. Yeah. I got, yeah, I like I got to sign everything. I said, I got, obviously I wanted this sign cause I've got the Phil Heath and Brandon Curry cover signed as well. So I'm going to put it in a big, uh, and get that signed. And, um, also, with, sorry, with, uh, to, uh, with regards to other tours, um, I'm hoping by next week I'll be announcing the next one. Ah, yeah. Um, and then, like I said, I'm I'm working on probably two, three, four, five at the moment. Um, so obviously, I'll just be I don't want to announce them until they're all locked in and, and you know 
things are in place. But um, I will be announcing another tour in the next seven days maximum, I'm hoping. Excellent. So we'll, we'll keep an eye out. We'll, we'll announce it here too, but keep an eye out on Giles's Giles Tiger on Instagram. It's just Giles underscore Tiger, right? Correct. Correct. Giles underscore Tiger because somebody else stole Giles Tiger without the underscore before he did, I, I'm guessing. Bastards. Yeah, they do that. <laughs> so keep an eye out, guys. Uh, we appreciate you watching Power Hour and all the other content. Please check out all the content on this channel. We've got all kinds of stuff. I'm trying to make this channel another level, bring it better and better quality as time goes by, you know, with the help of Jen behind the scenes and guys like Giles helping me out, you know, nowhere but up, nowhere but up. So appreciate you so much, Giles. And appreciate all of you who watch these things. And please, as I say on the bottom there, subscribe, like, share, and ring that bell. And we'll see you next time.